happy holiday season and happy almost new year. It's so crazy that it's almost 2024. And it's also crazy that I have never talked about the environmental impact of New Year's Eve. I've done Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, 4th of July, pretty much every single holiday, major holiday in the US, except for New Year's. And this is not even a United States holiday. This is a worldwide holiday. So actually what inspired this video was not because I like wanted to make one about New Year's. And I think I've never made one because I've never been really a big celebrator of New Year's. I just stay up, watch the ball drop and then go to bed. <laughs> but what inspired this was when I wrote my environmental impact of fireworks this year for the US 4th of July, realized that that, wow, there's actually a lot more waste that comes with New Year's, so let's dive into it today. Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all sorts of things, zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste. And of course we have to talk about zero waste holidays when they come up. So let's dive into the environmental impact of New Year's Eve, but also how we can have a more eco-friendly New Year's Eve this year and for years to come. Of course, as I mentioned, the first thing we're gonna be talking about today is fireworks. Now I'm not going to dive into them fully as I did in the zero waste 4th of July video, which it's mostly about fireworks, so Anybody can check it out. That will be linked above and below. But here's the short version. Fireworks are one of the worst things that we could do for the environment as individuals. Thankfully, we don't do them a lot. Thankfully, they are only done like once or twice a year, but when we do use them, they are extremely harmful to the environment, air, to the water, to the soil, to the animals, to our own health. First, they cause air pollution. This is caused by particulate matter, which is solid and liquid substances found in the air and is deemed the most toxic air pollutant due to the way that it affects our lungs and hearts, as well as the environment. Not only this, but fireworks also release harmful gases, such as carbon monoxide and nitric oxide, which are toxic to inhale and can inhibit the transport of oxygen throughout one's body, not just in animals, but in plants too, so it can kill plants as well. This same type of pollution can also get into our water and soil as well, but other sorts of pollution can too. The best known or perhaps the worst known chemical in fireworks is perchlorate. It is added to fireworks to make them shoot upwards. It can affect the thyroid gland when consumed in large amounts, but can also leach into our soil and groundwater. Not to mention physical pollution in the form of confetti, plastics, ash, and so much more can also be found in our air, water, and soil. I don't think a lot of people think about when it comes to fireworks is also light and noise pollution. It can affect us, but it mostly affects the animals. It can literally change migration times and patterns of animals. This has been observed in geese. Again, we'll talk more about this in the original video. But it can also lead to lost pets and wildlife deeming their habitat, their natural home, no longer safe, and then they move. And again, a lot of accidents happen in roadways during this time because animals are running all over the place because they're scared. Some things we can do instead of fireworks are pyrotechnic displays. These are fire displays and are at lower altitudes, there's less noise, and these are being tested in Canada. Italy is also testing silent fireworks, so you still get the same light in color, but with less noise. I'm not sure how that works or what the pollution levels are. Like, are they still exploding and creating ash and perchlorate and other th sort of things? I'm not sure, but any step in the right direction is a step in the right direction. Wise words from me. <laughs> one that you've probably heard of and has become quite popular recently is drone displays. I think the first major one was used during the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. And laser displays are also super, super fun light displays that don't involve any pollution or any noise. Something else that I see every single year is the overconsumption of decorations and decorative items. I wasn't really sure what to call this stuff, but what I'm thinking is like the glasses with the years on it, the like noisemakers with the year on it, noisemakers in general, confetti, streamers, all that sort of stuff. And of course, because since last year's decorations have last year's year on it, people feel the need to buy new decorations to match the new year for their party or wherever they're going to celebrate. Instead, if you decorate and you throw parties, I encourage you to just get timeless decorations that just say, happy new year, new year's eve with no year on it. So that way you can use these decorations over and over again. And something that deserves its own category is confetti. It's, I don't know if confetti is such a popular item at home, like for personal use, but I know it's a big, big ticket item for big parties like in New York City and Miami and wherever else they have parties. I don't really know. <laughs> but in New York City alone, in the Times Square New Year's Eve party, this produces 1.5 tons or 3,300 pounds of confetti waste. Just confetti. Of course, we can't do much about this on our own unless, you know, you know the governor or you live in New York City and you can, you know, advocate for change yourself there. Other people can do that in their own cities too. But what we can do is not use confetti in our own parties, in our own home. And if you really, really want to use confetti, choose paper, choose paper that has either been dyed with natural materials like soy-based inks or not dyed at all because even if it's paper and it gets into the environment and paper will break down, these harmful chemicals from the dyes will still get into our water and soil. And at the end of the day, please avoid plastic confetti. It's extremely harmful to create. It's very harmful to dispose of. It cannot be recycled. It blows around. It gets in the environment. It turns into microplastics. It's a mess. 
Okay, moving on to travel. I feel like a lot of people travel this time of year, myself included. <laughs> We're actually going to Florida this year, not necessarily for New Year's, but to go see my granddad. I mean, people are off of work, people are off of school. It's just such a popular time to travel. So let's talk about some ways that we can travel in a more eco-friendly way. I also have a full video on zero waste travel. In fact, I think I have a full zero waste travel playlist. That was honestly kind of how I started my channel, it was very zero waste travel heavy focused, but I'll leave my most recent travel video up here. But in short, here's what you can do. Choose a mode of transportation other than flying if possible. And if you can also avoid using a car. So essentially choose a train. Trains are the most eco-friendly way that you can travel. But if you can't, if you can't choose a train, carpool. And if you have to drive a car, drive the most eco-friendly car as possible. And something that I never thought of as a zero waste travel tip until my dad brought it up. He travels for business he has for the last like 30 years. And that's to rent a car. Especially if you're like us, we only have one car right now and it's a truck and it only gets 20 miles to the gallon. So like not very eco-friendly. We have it because we live in an RV and we need something to pull the RV. Instead of driving a gas guzzler down to Florida, we're gonna rent a hybrid that gets something closer to 50 miles to the gallon. Can be charged instead of fueled with fossil fuels. So even if you have have to drive there are ways that you can make it more eco-friendly and because of how much money we're going to be saving on gas the cost of the car is probably going to pay itself off anyway if you do have to fly choose a direct flight over several different stops because the most fuel that's used on a plane is during takeoff and landing so the fewer times you have to take off and land the fewer fuel that's going to be used also don't forget to pack light it's not going to make the biggest difference in the world but Planes do burn more energy with how heavy the aircraft is. So if you're packing for like a weekend trip, three suitcases, that's unnecessary. So just be mindful of that. Of course, also bring your zero waste swaps with you. Bring your reusable water bottle, your reusable coffee cup, your reusable utensils, um, your shampoo bars, your safety razor, whatever it may be to help you reduce waste while you're on the road, while you're flying and traveling, do that as well. When it comes to disposables, stop using them. But what I'm talking about is if you're hosting a party, ditch the paper plates, the plastic cutlery, the plastic cups. If you have to choose paper and bioplastic over regular base, regular plastic, oil-based plastic. And you can learn more about how to throw a zero waste party in this video. So when it comes to the kitchen, use reusables as much as possible. If this is going to be a lot easier if you're having a small to medium sized gathering. If you're having a really, really large gathering, it's gonna be kind of tricky. But what you can do is go to the thrift store, thrift some plates, thrift some forks and spoons and cups and use that for your crowd instead. Over the long term, it will save you money instead of buying disposables year after year after year. But if you are looking for disposables, my favorite brand is Repurpose. They do all paper and all bioplastic to help you prevent a little bit of oil-based plastic waste. But disposables, I'm not just talking about plates and cups. I'm also talking about decor. I already talked about like the specific branded stuff. Like this year, it's all gonna be 2024 branded. Instead, just get Happy New Year's, Happy Holidays, New Year's Eve broadly, so that way you can use it over and over again, but also just simply avoid a lot of the wasteful stuff that's going to be thrown away at the end of the night, like beads, noisemakers, balloons, streamers. Find ways that you can, I mean, reuse them first off. You can reuse a lot of this stuff even though it's designed to be single use. Or again, opt for paper and bioplastic decorations instead of plastic. If you want streamers, get paper streamers instead of plastic ones. You know, you want like little signs and party favors, opt for paper instead of plastic. So you can still use disposals in a more eco-friendly way, something that can be composted, recycled, or it's just less harmful to create than plastic, instead of completely ditching them cold turkey if you don't want to. Let's move on to food and drink. First off, again, I talk about this a lot in the how to throw a zero waste party video, but in short, when it comes to food, try to make as much from scratch as possible to avoid food packaging. And if you do buy food and packaging, just opt for the biggest amount. Instead of buying individual packs of potato chips, buy one big bag of potato chips and you can just refill the bowl all night long. Same with pretzels, carrots, whatever it may be. But if you don't wanna make a bunch of stuff from scratch, make it a potluck. Then everybody just has to bring one or two homemade items instead of one person making a ton of homemade items. This takes the workload off of everybody and can also encourage people to make stuff from scratch instead of buying stuff from new because it's a little bit easier to make just one item. Now for drinks, this is typically the main event of most New Year's parties is the drinks. So let's make it plastic free. What you can do is opt for things like cans, glass, and plastic bottles, whatever is accepted for recycling in your area instead of like plastic pouches, for example. Metal is generally the most recyclable item worldwide, so opt for that when you can. But what you can also do is you can make mixed drinks yourselves at home, just like with food, buy the largest amount possible. Instead of buying individual bottles of Coca-Cola, buy a two liter of Coca-Cola. That really cuts down on how much packaging is created and disposed of. And then when it comes to cups, making those mixed drinks at home reduces waste, but also the way that you serve them. Don't serve them in red solo cups if you can help it. They are not recyclable. Serve them in cups that you already have, or if you want something more, I don't know, party related, something that's not breakable because 
Sometimes glass is not always a good idea to have at parties. You can do, I think it's Solo Cup brand or maybe it's Ball brand. Either way, they are technically disposable aluminum cups that are more recyclable than plastic, but they're also dishwasher safe. You can reuse these metal cups over and over again. Not breakable, they're reusable. I think this is a great swap. Okay, let's talk fashion. Maybe I'm not the one to talk about this. I'm not exactly a fashionista, but I do have some advice. Not necessarily about trends, but how to make your fashion more eco-friendly. Around this time of year, you're gonna be seeing a lot of like, wear this to your New Year's Eve party videos on TikTok and posts on Instagram and Pinterest and stuff. But you simply don't have to do that. You can wear what you wore last year. You can find something else in your closet to wear this year. You can find something secondhand. Honestly, you could also like swap with friends. Like if you liked your friends out from, from last year and they liked your outfit from last year, just swap. So what you can do, if you wanna fit also like the trending items list, just take the trending items list to the thrift store and see what you can find there. I know sequins are popular for New Year's Eve, glitter, rhinestones, very sparkly things. You can find a lot of that stuff secondhand and also significantly cheaper. And if you wanna learn more about why shopping secondhand is so important, you can check out this video. But at the end of the day, use what you already have, swap amongst friends, shop secondhand before buying new. I think this should go without saying, but the next one is to clean up after yourself, particularly if you attend something like the New York City New Year's Eve party, LA, like if you go to a big event, clean up after yourself. But even if you just attend a smaller party as well. In New York City alone, the amount of waste that gets left behind amounts to over 50 tons of waste in the form of drinks, party favors, and other waste. Imagine if everyone who attended held on to their trash until they got back to their hotel room, until they got home, until they found a trash can. How much waste could be avoided from being in the streets ending up in the Hudson River and the Atlantic Ocean. Better yet, imagine if everybody bought a reusable water bottle, if everybody didn't buy into the wasteful trends of buying the, you know, the glasses and the necklaces and the noisemakers. There are so many ways to avoid waste, but also there are so many ways to dispose of your waste responsibly instead of littering. And lastly, for New Year's Eve, make your New Year's resolution an eco-friendly one. This could look like reducing our waste, becoming more involved in our community, finding new ways to live zero waste at home, trying new zero waste swaps. You can check out my videos from years past. I have three. I had one from 2021, 2020, 2023, and next week I'm coming out with one for 2024 if you want some up-to-date New Year's resolutions. They are all a little bit different. A lot of them are repeating themes when it comes to like really big things we can do for the planet, like starting a compost, for example. But also let us know how you're gonna be living more eco-friendly in 2024 down below. I hope that this video helps you to have a more eco-friendly New Year's Eve and a more eco-friendly New Year in general, a more eco-friendly like full calendar year for 2024. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Let us know how you're gonna be having a eco-friendly New Year's Eve down below. Again, for me, I'm gonna be in Florida and I'll probably just watch the ball drop. Maybe we'll go to the beach. I have no idea, but I'll tell you what I'm not gonna be doing. And that's, I'm not gonna be buying anything. I'm not gonna be buying any new clothes for, the, for anything that I attend. I'm not going to be buying any party favors and noisemakers and all that wasteful stuff. And I'm not gonna be shooting off any fireworks. Let me know what other sort of zero waste holiday content you wanna see. I will see you in the next video. But until then, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye guys. I don't have an intro. I like never have an intro. Um, <laughs> me. This is for the intro. What was I gonna say? <laughs> cool, that's all. That's a clap. Metal is the most recyclable. <laughs> I'm ready to be done. I have one more video to film. This is why you don't go on vacation. See you in next video. I'll see you in the next video.